once you get your car, you're gonna be like, woohoo, like, you're gonna be so happy. Oh my god, this car is so cute. I love it, I love it, I love it. Wait, I don't have a spare tire. Wait, I don't have mats. Wait, I don't have storage containers. The car comes with nothing. Hey guys, I'm Jelana. Welcome to my channel. And if it's your first time here, welcome back, sis. So today I'm gonna to be talking about my two month review of my Tesla Model 3. Wow, I can't even believe that it's been two months already. I love my car. Love, 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 love my car. But there are a lot of cons about the car that I wanna discuss, as well as the pros, of course. And I'm going to be diving into them with this video. The first topic that I'm gonna talk about, which everybody wants to know about, is charging. Let me just start with saying this, baby. If you don't have a charger at your apartment, adequate charging at your apartment, or you do not have a house or a townhouse where you can install a wall charger. Just sit this one out. Sit this one out. Just don't even, I wouldn't even think about getting a Tesla, honestly, because you're going to be highly, highly inconvenienced when it comes to charging. The reason why I say this is that it will probably be really inconvenient to have to always go to superchargers just to charge. So charging for me is very convenient because I have charging at my apartment and it's free and there are typically enough spots to where I can get in at least every other day if I wanted to. I also can charge for free at work. If that is your reality, you will love having a Tesla because the level of convenience is so amazing to never have to go to a gas station. Like I literally just pull into my apartment complex and I plug up my car. If you have a house, you will literally just pull up to your house and you plug up your house. I mean, if you have a house, you literally just pull up to your house and you'll be able to plug up your car. And it's so convenient and it's honestly mind blowing at first that you literally don't have to go to a gas station. Like, you charge the same place that you sleep. It's so convenient. Charging does take quite a bit of time depending on what kind of charger you're using. If you are using the type of chargers that are usually at apartments or maybe it might be at your job or at hotels, etc., those are usually slower chargers. Again, I'm not gonna get into the text and specs of them, but those are usually slower chargers. The fastest chargers that I see are the superchargers. Those are the ones that can charge your car fully within like 20 to 40 minutes. However, the chargers that are at your apartment and things like that, they take about eight hours to charge. So you definitely wanna be in an environment where you can safely leave your car there overnight. One thing that I love about Tesla is that it'll tell you what percentage your car will be on once you get to your destination and even when you get back home. Anytime I type in an address, it'll automatically tell me what percentage my car will be on once I get to that destination. And that's super convenient for managing how much mileage that you're using and making sure that your car battery never gets too low. So like I said, if you aren't someone who can charge easily at home or at your apartment, um, it would just be kind of inconvenient because you would have to sit at a Tesla supercharger for about 40 minutes, at least every four to five days, depending on how much you drive. Another con that I will name is that if you are using chargers that are not supplied by Tesla, so if you're charging at your apartment complex or you're charging at your job, or even when I go to tennis, there's charge points there, those chargers are a different type of charger than the ones that Tesla use. So you have to use an adapter and the adapters do come with every single car. I would just say that it's a little annoying having to put the adapter on almost every time I charge, unless I'm charging at a supercharger, which is almost never. The next part about charging that I will talk about is mileage. So even though on paper and theoretically, my Tesla has about the same mileage as my previous car, which is a Toyota Camry. I'm supposed to get 270 miles per full charge. The fact of the matter is, is that you are still going to stop for charging more often on a Tesla than you would stop for gas. The reason being is that you kind of get a little bit of range anxiety. The way I feel about charging and mileage when it comes to a Tesla is the same way I feel about my phone. So when I have my phone, most of the time I leave this house, I try to make sure that my phone is fully charged. I never really want to be in a position to where I'm at a restaurant or I'm out with my friends and my phone is really, really low on battery and I could find a charger. Like I could find a charger. I'm pretty sure someone around me will have a charger, but then I would have to kind of inconveniently sit and wait for my phone to charge or I might get stuck out with a dead phone and it's like I just would never want that to happen. I feel the same way about my Tesla. I don't really like my battery to get too low and since there aren't as many chargers as there are gas stations, you wanna always make sure that you're charged up. And another thing is that if I were to charge somewhere public, I have to now think about if the chargers are full because sometimes the chargers are taken. So like sometimes if I drive to work and I'm relying on my chargers at my job, sometimes the chargers are taken up. 
or if I want to charge at tennis, sometimes those chargers are taken up. So I have to worry about whether the chargers are even A, available, and then B, also sitting there to wait for it to charge. So therefore, you're going to find yourself charging more often. And that honestly is not an issue at all for me because I can charge at my apartment. So I don't really have to worry about that as, as much, which is kind of why I made my first point about if you don't have adequate charging at your apartment or you don't live in a house, you probably shouldn't get a Tesla. Well, I'm not going to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. I'll just say that it might be a little bit inconvenient. So anyway, back to the mileage point, like I was saying, you kind of get the same mileage as a car, but because of range anxiety, you don't get the full mileage. You're never going to just let your car get on E. At least I wouldn't. I can only speak for me and my experiences. I just personally would never let my car get anywhere below like 15%. If it is on 15%, I want to be on my way home where I know I can get like that full charge. I hope that kind of makes sense. It's just like you're going to want to charge your car more often because the same way you would your phone. Just because your phone is on 50%, you're not gonna just leave the house with your phone on 50%. You'd rather your phone be fully charged before you leave the house. And that's the same way I feel about my car. It's just like, I'd rather my car be fully charged. I'm never really pushing the limits to see how much mileage I can get out of my car, if that makes sense. The last part of charging that I'm going to talk about is road trips. I just recently did my first road trip in the Tessie and I was actually pretty pleased with the result. So when you type in where you're going, so I, I drove from Atlanta, Georgia to Charlotte, North Carolina. When you type in the address, it'll tell you along the way where you should be stopping at to charge. And I think that that is the most convenient thing ever because you don't have to sit here and do the math in your head. You don't have to guess how far your car will make it. It'll literally tell you where to stop and it'll even go as far as to telling you how many miles per hour you need to stay below to make sure that you can make it to your destination. And that's one thing I really appreciate about Tesla. I never really have to guess or do those calculations myself. My car simply does it for me. When I did do this trip, charging was super, super convenient. Once I stopped at a charging station, it was in the same location as a gas station. So there were bathrooms, there were snacks, there was a restaurant. Surprisingly, my car told me that I only needed to charge for 20 minutes. I ended up staying longer so that I could just fully charge my car while I was there because I really wasn't in a rush. But it was nice that if I was stopping for charging that I really don't have to stop long, maybe 10 to 20 minutes at the most. I will say that the con with road trips is the number of stops. You do have to stop a little more frequently than you would if you were driving a gas car because I feel like our cars want us to be more safe than starry. So Tesla kind of throws in a lot of stops. Most times I was only recommended to charge between 10 and 20 minutes, which was super convenient. The nice thing about it is that you can watch Netflix or Hulu or anything like that on your screen while you're charging. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the quality of the car. This is a little interesting, I will say. I just wanna start by saying the biggest con is that Tesla does not feel like a luxury car. I've never even had a luxury car and I can tell you that. The quality of the car is not up to par with other brands such as like Mercedes or Lexus or BMWs. It's just not a luxury feeling car. I've seen TikToks that compare it to an Ikea car. So if you've ever shopped at Ikea, you know what I'm talking about. It's just very, very modern to where it looks really nice, but the actual materials and the way that it's built is not necessarily a quality car. I think that where most of the money is spent on the car is the technology in that screen. Which, don't get me wrong, the screen is amazing and I love the technology. However, if you are looking for like a high quality luxury car or if you're coming from a BMW or if you're coming from a Mercedes, you might not feel like you're getting your money's worth if that's what you're looking for. The car just looks really, really good because it's so chic, it's so minimal. And honestly speaking, modernism and minimalism is what allows companies to get away with so much because they're able to give us so little but yet it looks so nice in our eyes because you want everything to be modern and that's really how the tesla is there's literally nothing in the car and that brings me to my next con the car comes with nothing nothing <laughs> absolutely nothing but the screen so when it comes to storage like storing things in my armrest or storing things in my center console i literally have to buy storage compartments just so that I can put little knickknacks in there comfortably. Otherwise, it's just a big, huge hole. If you go back to my Tesla delivery day slash pickup vlog, you'll be able to see some of the accessories and things that I bought to kind of spruce up my car a little bit. But the car definitely comes with a bare minimum. I think one thing that really upset me is that the car doesn't even come with car mats. And like the type of material that the floor is, you obviously need a mat. It doesn't come with a spare tire either. Once you get your car, you're gonna be like, Whoa! You're gonna be so happy. Oh my god, this car is so cute. I love it, I love it, I love it. But then as time goes on, you're gonna start to realize like, wait, I don't have mats. Wait, I don't have storage containers. Wait, I don't have a spare tire. And I actually did get a flat tire 
recently and it would have been really nice if I would have had a spare tire but I didn't so I had to spend a hundred and ten dollars I think patching the tire up on the bright side I love 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 technology and I'm a technology person so if I had to go back and choose it all over again I would still choose the technology and the minimalism and all those things over a more luxury car like I still would not change my mind about buying my Tesla I really really love the technology I love that I'm able to watch Netflix and Hulu and YouTube on my screen while I'm getting my car washed I love that my car saves all of my settings and is able to store different settings um, as far as where the seat is positioned where the steering wheel is positioned and things like that based on who's driving my car I love how I'm able to access so many things from my phone I can see the cameras from my phone I can honk my horn from my phone I can roll down my windows I can Turn on my air. I also love that my phone is my key. For someone like me, that is so important because I'm always losing car keys. I I cannot tell y'all how many times I lost my car key on my last car. It's honestly embarrassing. Like I spent so much money replacing car keys, but now all I need is this. That's it. I love that the spare keys are little cards that I can put in my wallet. Honestly, everything is just so perfect for me. I really love, 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 love the technology on it and that's just one thing that will keep me in the Tesla family forever and ever and ever. I'm okay with sacrificing some of the luxuriousness for the technology that it has. But I also came from a Toyota. So my my bar is a little different than someone who is coming from like a BMW or a Porsche or something like that. If you came from an already luxury car, I don't know. Make sure you test drive it first to make sure that you like everything. But I came from a Toyota Camry. so. I just still love my car. I'm not really picking about like the quality of the seats or anything like that. It's really just something that I noticed. Another feature that I really love on my car is that the car auto locks. Like I don't have to start the car or stop the car. I literally walk away from the car. It'll lock my doors and roll up my windows. And I love that feature. There's just so many different features that I would not trade for anything, honestly. The last category, and this is probably actually my favorite category, is the safety features. This car feels so, so, so safe to drive. Honestly, if I had kids, I would want them to drive Teslas. That's probably really expensive. There are so many safety features on the car. So when you're parking, it literally tells you how many inches you are away from things. I love how many cameras are in the back. I did not have a backup camera on my last car, so I just feel like this is like, I hit the jackpot with this car. I upgraded completely when I bought this car. So I really love how safe it is while I'm parking. That's where I got all the things at on my last car. I'm always hitting something when I'm parking. So I really love that you can see from every angle how far you are from something. If not on the camera, then you can definitely see the inches that you are away from something. I think that this is especially important because a lot of the parking spots in my garage say compact and it's really, really tight to park in. It really makes me feel comfortable parking since I can see how close I am to everything. The next thing that I love is autopilot. I love, 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 love these autopilot. It's just such a nice, safe feature. If you don't know what autopilot is on the Tesla, every Tesla as of now comes with it. Basically, autopilot will make sure that your car stays in its lane and it'll slow down and speed up based on the car that's in front of you and also the speed limit and the max speed that you put your car on. So if I'm driving on the freeway and there's a car in front of me, it'll kind of like speed up and slow down based on what that car is doing. I just think that it's so convenient, especially when I'm in traffic, because I don't have to worry about stopping and going and stopping and going. I can just kind of let my car do that for me. And it's also really, really nice on road trips. It really takes the pressure away from driving, especially when you're on the freeway or on road trips, because it allows you to just relax a little bit and just kind of like let your car do most of the acceleration and deceleration. I personally don't feel the need to upgrade to full self-driving because I do think that autopilot is enough for me at the moment. I will say though, you have to really make sure that you still pay attention when your car is in autopilot. It is not perfect. There are a lot of times when my car simply does not know what to do and it needs me to take over driving immediately you also have to keep your, your hands on the steering wheel so that also makes sure that it's really safe and if you keep not putting your hands on the steering wheel it will lock you out of autopilot and not let you use it for the rest of your drive so that's another nice safety feature to make sure that you're paying attention to the road even when you are on autopilot there's times where my car doesn't know what to do when it's an autopilot so for example if I'm crossing a large intersection and the lines kind of disappear, my car really can't keep up with where the car should go. Also, one thing to really be cautious about is autopilot does break your car really, really suddenly. So if a car in front of you slows down to make a right turn, autopilot will 
practically slam on the brakes. And that's probably the only thing that I don't really like about autopilot because I feel like it's super inconsiderate to the cars that are behind me, especially when I'm in traffic. Like you don't wanna just slam on your brakes suddenly. It's just not safe for people who are driving behind me. So after getting a Tesla, I vow to never drive behind a Tesla because I don't want a Tesla's autopilot to brake check me. Another thing with autopilot, sometimes I feel like my autopilot gets too close to other cars or gets close too close to the side of the road. It takes a lot for me to like fully trust it. I mostly like using it when I'm on like an open freeway or even if I am in traffic, that's fine. But I just like the, the lanes to be really wide. There are a lot of lanes in Atlanta especially on like the city streets that are kind of more narrow and very, very windy. And those are the types of streets that I really don't like using autopilot on because I just feel like I'm always way too close to the other cars or I'm way too close to the side of the road where there could be mailboxes or things like that. So again, you definitely just want to really pay attention. Another reason why I don't use it on the streets that much is because although it does stop when the car stops in front of me, it does not stop for red lights or stop signs. So if you stop, if you press your foot on the brake, it'll take your car out of autopilot and you'll have to put it back in autopilot. So I just try to just wait until I'm on the freeway to use it for the most part. Other safety features that I really appreciate are the green light charm. So if I am waiting at a red light for the light to turn green, it will charm once the light turns green. This is really helpful because honestly speaking, sorry guys, when the light turns red, I usually check my text messages or I get distracted or I start daydreaming. So the chime is just a nice reminder for me to like go so the people aren't honking at me. <laughs> Another feature that I like, I'm just gonna call it the red car alert because I don't know what it's called, but basically if a car in front of you slows down really fast and your car notices that you're not slowing down with that car, the, the car will like light up in red on your screen and it'll like make a really not loud noise to like force you to pay attention and stop the car or slow down the car quickly. Sometimes it does alert prematurely. I will say that that's a con because sometimes it's alerting when I'm literally about to slow down. But sometimes it could actually be, you know, life-saving or it could save you from getting into an accident. So even though it is annoying sometimes, I definitely wouldn't turn it off because it's super helpful. Especially when you're driving in traffic and people are doing crazy things all the time during rush hour. The last thing that I'm gonna talk about is Tesla roadside assistance and insurance. So one thing that I do like is that you can get your insurance actually through Tesla. And I saved so much money by getting my insurance through them. My insurance ended up only being like $62 a month originally, where other people were quoting me like upwards of like $200 a month. So I really do appreciate the affordable prices that Tesla has. However, I did not know that Tesla insurance is based on your safety score while you're driving. So your insurance price could change month to month. So I randomly got a notification that my insurance changed from $60 to like $90 and I was just like what the heck is this about and apparently I'm not driving safe enough for Tesla so now that I know I mean I'm, I want to drive safe for myself this is kind of embarrassing but I want to drive safe for myself but now I really need to drive safe because you know I want to make sure that your insurance price is low so I guess it is an incentive to driving safer and paying attention in the car this is kind of embarrassing but yeah it did increase based on my safety score i guess the 62 dollars was just like the bare minimum like if you you know assuming that you had a really high score and then once your score adjusts your insurance price will increase or decrease accordingly so you definitely want to be aware of that if you do decide to get tesla insurance also like i mentioned earlier in the video i did get a flat tire and it was super nice i was able to just pull my phone in the app contact tesla they called me they said do you want someone to tow your car right now to a shop or do you want to wait for however long and someone will come to you and replace your tire i opted in for the mobile service because i was at home and they literally came they brought their big old van they fixed my tire and they left and it was perfect um the only con was like i said i had to actually pay for the service of getting my tire patched and tires are not under warranty unfortunately but the service within itself was free. So like the act of them coming to me is free. Or if I wanted to get my car towed, that's free as well. So I do like that the Tesla roadside assistance is free. I don't know if it's free because I have a Tesla or because I have Tesla insurance, I'm not sure. But whatever the case is, it was super convenient and I was really pleased overall with my service. So that's it for the video. More of the story is I love, 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 love my car. I definitely would not trade it for the world. There's no other car that I would have gotten. Okay, well, there is this Porsche that I really like. But the Porsche is way out of my price range. 
in this price range, I would not have gotten any other car personally. I love my car. I could really just sleep in my car. Like, that's how much I love it. It's such an enjoyable experience driving the car, doing that road trip. Like, it's just really nice to have a car that you just really love. I feel like the pros definitely outweigh the cons. I feel super safe while driving it. I love the technology. I love that it's foolproof. I can't lock my keys in the car. I can't leave my car door unlocked on accident. I definitely just wouldn't have traded my car for any other car out there. If you have any questions about Tesla or my delivery experience, just make sure you let me know in the comments and also make sure that you guys check out my vlog of my pickup slash delivery day. If you want more Tesla content, make sure that you let me know in the comments. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye. Let me get your vibe